We're in Calendar, in stage three of the Rob Roy Way between here and Strathair. Probably, probably about nine miles or something. So, you know, a fairly easy day and quite a straightforward route. Well, we're heading, uh, following the line of the what used to be the railway line. It'll run between Ben Ready there. And a great big loch, whose name escapes me, but I'll remember later on. But the thing about a, a, a decent, uh, good long walk is that you've always got to make sure you, you have a pie to munch at some point. So if I'm into the shop and calendar there and I bought two pies, I'm going to eat one of them now and I'll save one for later on. So it's a cracking day, there's hardly any wind, the sun shines out. And I've got pies. What could be better? So let's be off. Now and then you get little reminders of the fact that this was at one time a railway line. I would imagine it was probably cut or prevented from being a railway line for any longer in the, I don't know, late 1960s. I think beaching destroyed everything, I don't know, was it 1968 or something? Such a shame. In the early 1960s, I, with the rest of my family, visited Balquidder, uh, relatives in Balquidder, in fact, um, and we went by train. But I have no recollection whatsoever <laughs> of, uh, of the train journey. I have little snippets of memory about the actual the holiday like lying in a field and having young calves lick my face, but I just have no memory of the train journey. Hello there. Hi there. Which is a shame because it, given the scenery that you'll see later on, it has to be one of, it would have been one of the, the most beautiful railway journeys in the whole country. So, I mean, this is day three between Callard and Sartair. Uh, the, 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 next, uh, the next day that I'm on this, that will be for the next video, uh, would be day four, and that will be, I'm going to make that Strathair to Lochairn Head. And uh, some folk might look at that and think, what? That's not that far. But what that will do is it will allow me, and anyone else in fact, to uh, pop along the road from the King's House, or I think it's the, the Moor, Hotel, it's known as now. Um, pop along the road, I think it's just a couple of miles, two miles towards Bulquitter. And then the old uh, Kirk uh, graveyard there, you've got the grave of uh, Rob Roy McGregor. And clearly, as this is called the Rob Roy Way, you would perhaps want to visit the grave of the man himself. Hello there. I mean, when I do day four, I, I personally won't uh, visit Rob Roy's grave, it's simply because I have visited it on countless occasions. Indeed, my ancestors are buried in the same church graveyard. 
So I, I know exactly what, what, the, what the situation is there and how it looks and what have you. But as I say, given that this is the Rob Roy way, I would highly recommend that you do such a thing. Very noisy river. So we've emerged from that uh, woodland path by the river and uh, we're now on a, a very straight bit which kind of feels like the railway line again although I'm not too sure I suspect it probably is Anything as straight as this is either a railway line or an old Roman road and I don't think it's an old Roman road It's, it's really opened up here, I just want to show you. Um, okay, some water in there, which is probably where Loch Lubnig sort of starts or ends, I'm not sure which way it goes. And uh, I mean, up there somewhere is the top of Ben Lady. And because this is um, because this is late autumn, the, the countryside is, is, you know, often at this time of year words escape me. It's just oh, I nearly jumped out my skin there. Um, <laughs> maybe walking down the middle of the road isn't a good idea. I'll,
I sometimes wonder what it is that attracts me to the great outdoors. Because sometimes you get wet and sometimes you get muddy. Sometimes you get a wee bit fed up. But this is what attracts me to Scotland's great outdoors. By the gate. Starting to hit uh, Loch Lubnick here, and the, the colours and the hills on the other side of the loch are absolutely stunning. But we're, we're also about to hit a cafe and a toilet, yeah, so that's a much, much welcome thing. I can hear a car coming. That's one of the slightly irritating things about this street. There's cars on it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have some soup and, uh, and a pee. So we're still on the, what used to be the old railway route. I'm sitting right on the bank of Loch Lubnig. We've just left, uh, there's like almost like a little village of uh, wooden cabins there. Sort of holiday uh, type uh, lets. Absolutely stunning location, I mean, you know. I can't imagine a more picturesque place to have a holiday. I just popped into the, the cafe there uh, to use their toilet. And uh, they've got a huge picture of a steam train on this very railway line. And it shows the section that we're actually on just now. I'll show you it at the, at the end of the video. I'm not sure who I should credit, uh, where they would have got the image from, but um, whoever you are, thank you. Having come up a little bit from the lock side, we're starting to go down again. I think this will eventually lead and, and pass uh, the steading or the farm called Lagan. Although it's a while since I've done this, but I know we certainly past that at some point. I think it'll be quite soon. We're just passing the, the steading or the farm of Lagan now and uh, just after this farm there's a, a small field there used to be a little hut in it, I don't know if there still will be but if you look at that field there's all sorts of lumps and bumps in the ground that if you have a close look you can maybe see old kind of wall lines and what was without doubt um, some, perhaps a previous steading, and um, I 
I believe my ancestors came from there. I know that they moved from Strathaya to Buckwidder, probably not long after the Jacobite uprising. Um, and uh, everything tells me that this particular location um, is where they used to be. So, we'll have a look at that. I came upon this field quite a few years ago. I think I was just looking for some place to stop and have lunch. And at that time there was a little a little hut in the field. And I'd like to think it was some kind of Boy Scouts hut or something, but I could, I could be wrong. The, the hut's no longer there and it, that could be the remains of it just sitting in that field. But when I was having my lunch I had a wander around. And I've always been interested in archaeology and you, you can't help but notice all the kind of lumps and bumps in that field. It's not an ordinary field, you know. And uh, what, what, once you stop and spend a bit of time and have a good look, you can maybe trace what one presumes were all sorts of um, stone walls, whether boundary walls of individual properties or even houses. Uh, we're talking quite a long time ago here. Although you do sometimes wonder how long it takes for houses to be completely overgrown and to become just a field again. But it would be strange because when I was wandering around in this field, I, I just had a really strange feeling. Uh, I know that my ancestors, before they moved to Bokoda, Probably not long after the Jacobite Rebellion. They, they came from Strathair just before that, before moving to Bokwida. Um There's a couple of place names mentioned. I mean, I think Emmer Vullen is mentioned, excuse me, and Lagan is mentioned. And I don't suppose for one minute that they, they ever stayed in. Lagan's just over there. Quite a well to do steading and uh, farm, what have you. I just had a feeling that this was where they stayed, <laughs> you know. Um, there's nothing that I can base that feeling on other than just just a hunch, you know. You sometimes wonder if places and the remains of properties leave something behind, or perhaps the people that were here before left something behind it those who come after somehow recognise, even though we don't fully appreciate or understand what it is we're recognising or feeling. And um, could be a load of nonsense. But I, I just know that my ancestors once lived here. Uh, and All sorts of bouncing going on here with this bridge. <laughs> I'm being bounced into Strathair. Not a thing there. 
I'm not sure, I can't remember what it is. Could be the remains of a broch. A broch was a kind of round house with double thick walls and stairs between those double thick walls and various levels. It was like a very early version of um, a regular Scottish tower house, I think. Well, that's this is the Thayer and the walk's finished. Like all these walks these days, I always think it's going to be easy, but at the end of the day, I always end up knackered. Must be old age or something. Anyway, I'm going in there for a couple of beers, then we've got a bus back home. I'm Eddie Burns, I hope you've enjoyed it. See you again. By the storms of yesterday Shaded by the bend Where the spirits fade to grey I fly